Boy, I tell you, that traffic coming over from your mother's was bumper to bumper all the way from the West Oak turnoff. Would you keep it down, Ed? Mama's finally taking a nap, and this is the first breather I've had all day. Well, it's more than I can say. <laughs> this morning I had to go traipsing over there for her their nightgowns and all, and tonight I have to go over there for all this fall to roll. Whew! You think I didn't have a hardware store to run? You think I wasn't right in the middle of putting up a whole new display for that big shipment of Japanese rabbit traps came in today? <laughs> you think all I had and to do was... you button up your lip. Now, you have been great, just great, ever since Mama had her accident, but you gotta remember that I am the one that's been wheeling her around in that wheelchair for the past two days, and I am sorry, but I just don't have time to go out and buy you a medal. <laughs> now, did you remember to bring Mama's hand cream? She was worrying me sick that you'd forget it. Well, how could I forget it? That's what I went over there for. Why can't she give me credit for two cents worth of cents? Here's her hand cream, here's her electric blanket, here's her shawl, and here's her Castile shampoo. And the next time I make a trip over to her place, it's gonna be to take her home, and that better be soon. Ed, can't you get it through your head that we almost lost my mama? Yeah, I know, but if she had to take a fall and half kill herself, why couldn't she have done it over at your sister Ellen's place, and then he, she would have to take care of her. Did you get a hold of that sister of yours yet? No, I called her again this morning, and she wasn't home, and that snot-nosed little brat of hers said, I'll give Mommy the message just as soon as she gets back from her skiing trip. Yeah. Hello? Oh, Ellen, thank heavens. Now, don't go into a panic, because everything is all right. Mama is on the mend. She's asleep right now. Ed and me, we took care of her real good. We cleaned out the little storeroom right off the living room here, and we got her fixed up there real cozy. And the worst is over, thank the Lord. But that first night, I thought I was going to lose my mind. I was here all alone when it happened. Ed was at the store, I don't know, cleaning off or moving out some shells around or something to make way for this new shipment of something or other that's coming in, see? The Japanese rabbit traps. <laughs> anyway, I had to go all alone by myself in that ambulance with Mama well, to the hospital. It wasn't moving I... shells, just clearing out that west display window. I tell you, we get those suckers in the window. We Will can you shut up? <laughs> well, anyway, I've never been in an ambulance before in a... Well, Ellen, I am telling you what happened as fast as I can. Well, now, don't you use that tone of voice with me, sister, dear. Well, I... I will get on with it, Eunice. <laughs> In my own good time, or maybe I won't get on with it, Eunice, and just hang up on you. No, Ellen, she didn't have a heart attack. She asphyxiated herself. Didn't I tell you that? Oh, well... Mama and me was sitting and watching the roller derby scene, and then she went upstairs to go to the bathroom, and you know how she is. Whenever she walks into a room, she just gets it into her head that she's got to clean it up, you know. So she gets this big bottle of ammonia and another big bottle of bleach, and she bends down there in the bathtub, and she's scrubbing away, and she got her face right in the fumes, and I guess it just made her pass out, you know, cold like that. So then she staggered somehow. She staggered to the head of the stairs. Next thing I know, I hear this big clunk, and she's at the foot of the stairs in a heap. Oh, how cold, Ellen. I tell you, my heart stopped. Ed, go see what Mama wants now. Listen, I'd appreciate it if you would come over here and babysit with Mama tomorrow, Ellen, on account I want to go to that new um, end-of-the-month sale at the shopping mall. Well, now, of course I know your bridge tournament is important, and I wouldn't ask you to give it up for something insignificant, but you got to remember that I have been cooped up with that impossible old woman for two whole days. <laughs> well, to hell with your bridge tournament! <laughs> to hell with the country club! Ellen, this is a family emergency! <laughs> Coming in for a landing, uh, Where do you want to be put? Fine, right here. Okay. Any place where I won't be in everybody's way. Mama, how are you? How you feeling, huh? A little better, thank you, Eunice. Uh, oh, looky here, Mama. Ed remembered and got everything you wanted and even got your hand cream. You want to put some on now? A little bit later, maybe, Eunice. Now, you just sit down and quit fussing over me. All right. Last thing I want to be is a nuisance. You could hand me my shawl, though, if you don't mind. Y'all keep it so cold in this place. Oh, Ed, turn up the heat. We don't want Mama catching cold. Yeah. All I want to do is just sit here nice and quiet while you two go ahead and live your lives as though I wasn't around. <laughs> Ed, don't turn on the TV while Mama's visiting. 
Well, she said, go ahead and live our own lives, and it's time for bowling for dollars. <laughs> Thank you. Just fine, Ed. I think it's real cozy for us all to sit around and watch the TV. Although, why you want to watch that collection of freaks showing off, I'll never know. Mother, if you don't want to watch Bowling for Dollars, why don't you just say so? Mama, what would you like to watch? It's all the same to me. If watching TV is all you can think of to do. Well, no, it isn't all I can think of to do. We don't have to watch TV. Why, we can all talk. Sure, we can discuss things. I mean, the possibilities are endless. <laughs> Does this mean that bowling for dollars is knocked out of the box? <laughs> Come on, Ed, sit down. Just sit down. We'll all talk. We'll all visit and have a nice talk. <laughs> I think maybe I'll just read a bit. Here, Mama. You want to wheel me over there closer to the light, Eunice? Mama, there's no room for your chair over there. I'll just bring the light over to you. Here you go. <laughs> you got anything to read around here besides these trashy movie magazines? Yeah, I read the paper. No good to me anywhere. <laughs> You know, I woke up with the driest throat. The air in that little room is all funny. How in the hell can air be funny? <laughs> You want me to get you a Coke or something? You, you know I can't stand that stuff. Now just sit down and quit bothering yourself. Glass of orange juice would sure hit the spot, though. <laughs> All right, I made some while you was taking a nap. Well, I hope it ain't some more of that frozen stuff. Well, yes, Mama, I'm afraid it is. I haven't had time to go to the store and buy anything, let alone fresh oranges. Ain't nothing in here worth reading. I'm in the middle of a great murder mystery, but I left it at home. If I'd known I was going to end up over here, I'd brought it with me the other night. <laughs> Silly me, I should have thought to ask you to pick it up, Ed, when you went over to my house. Of course, I wouldn't dream of doing that now. You're probably tired. Yeah, I'm tired all right, Mom. I suppose tomorrow will be soon enough. My goodness, this glass is sticky. <laughs> Tomorrow won't be any good either. You see, I'm going to have to spend every spare minute you in the sleigh with you please get me a damp cloth so that I can wipe off my hands? Well, you see, those rabbit traps came in today. Oh, and my, yes, Ed, I know. Business has got to come first, even if it is all probably whistling in the dark. Now, what's that supposed to mean? She don't mean anything, Ed. I can speak for myself, Eunice. I didn't mean anything, Ed. <laughs> I wish you all the luck in the world. You know that. But frankly, I can't imagine the whole town going crazy to buy rabbit traps. <laughs> Especially when they're made in Japan. They're compact, they're sleek, the trap door snaps shut quick as lightning in the yeller. <laughs> well, like I said, Ed, I wish you all the best. Just don't be disappointed when the whole thing goes down the drain like all your other plans. You want to hand me that jar and you you can take this orange juice, put too much water in it. <laughs> this is not my jar of hand cream, this is my bobby pins. Who well, says Henrietta's hand cream right on the jar? This is an old jar that I keep on my dresser. I told you that my hand cream was in the kitchen on the windowsill. Well, I forgot that part. I mean, I was in the bedroom getting everything else, and there it was in plain view. Yeah, and I... it should be obvious to even you that hand cream don't rattle. <laughs> when you hear the bobby pins in here going clank, clank? Well, I might have heard a clink, clink. But if I did, I never dreamt it was coming from inside the jar of hand cream. Well, can't you open it up and look inside? I don't take time off to look inside of every jar of hand cream hey, I see. Hey, Mama, why don't you use some of my hand cream? Eunice, why don't you use the brains the good Lord gave you? My hands are rough from using all that ammonia. That watery stuff you call hand lotion ain't gonna do a thing. Well, I am sorry about your hands, Mama, but you gotta admit that none of this wouldn't have happened if you hadn't been up there in my bathroom cleaning 
cleaning my bathtub, which nobody asked you to do, and you wouldn't even be in this fix. I was only trying to help out a little bit. <laughs> I know you were, Mama. I'm sorry. I know, I know. I guess I shouldn't always be sticking my big fat nose into the way you keep house. You no, just trying to be part of your life, Eunice. I know, I know, Mama, and that's all right. I don't mind when you stick your big fat nose into my business. <laughs> I really don't. After all, it does show me that you do care. Well, then, could you please clean up them puffy balls of grease and let out from under your stove? <laughs> What? <laughs> Puffy balls of grease and lint out from under my stove. I don't believe it. I knew this was going to happen. Soon as you was in there taking your daily nap, I was down on my hands and knees scrubbing that damn kitchen floor and picking up them puffy balls of grease with my own hands because I knew you'd go berserk if you spotted any dirt on that floor. And boy, howdy, you spotted some, didn't you? <laughs> but it doesn't look to me like you've been down scrubbing the floors. It looks more to me like you've been flopping around reading these junk magazines this again. This is my house and I'll read what I like, Mama. And it's your fourth beer today. And I'm gonna tell you something I needed every one of them. <laughs> oh, Ellen. Yeah, oh yeah, she's wide awake now. You want to talk to her? It's your precious Ellen. Hello, sweet darling. <laughs> you didn't have to call me, honey. No, you didn't have to go to all that bother. Sure was nice of you, though. No, she didn't tell me you called. Oh, she did? What kind of abuse have you been heaping on Ellen's head? <laughs> oh, it's nothing, darling. No, I slipped and fell down the stairs, and I broke my ankle, but everybody says I'm real lucky I didn't break my hip. Yeah, well, I guess I just went nuts when I went into that bathroom upstairs and saw that greasy, grimy bathtub again. <laughs> Eunice must be wanting to make a planter out of it or something. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, I've scrubbed with ammonia and bleach before, and I never have gotten dizzy, but this time, Mummy, just fall down and go boom. <laughs> yeah, you come on over and visit me when you can, darling. I sure could use some ple pleasant company around here. <clears throat> Well, I know you're busy, and I don't want to inconvenience you. J next week be just fine. Oh, sure, I'll still be here. <laughs> yeah, best of luck to you on your bridge tournament, darling. Bye-bye, sweet angel. Ellen sends her love. How come you didn't tell Ellen about the puffy balls of grease and lint under my stove? What? <laughs> what? to give out to Time Magazine, huh? I think you better lay off the booze, Eunice. You're losing your marbles. <laughs> and you won't wheel me back into that closet full of cobwebs you call a bedroom. You just sit right down. Did I hear you right? Are you accusing me of not cleaning out that room? You saying that there are cobwebs in that room? There is a cobweb as thick as a rope swinging over the bed. I'm scared death is gonna swoop down and strangle me in my sleep. <laughs> Do I bother anybody about it? No. I just say a little extra prayer at night and take my chances. <laughs> where? Just where is there a cobweb in this room? It is hanging right over the bed, plain as day. I don't see any cobwebs in this room! <laughs> You can take a long walk on a short pier. I'm going back to the store. I can have a little peace and quiet. Well, on the way, stop by my house and pick up my hand cream and my murder mystery. Why don't you go sit on the tack? <laughs> When's the last time you ever did something for me? Here I am, a nervous wreck. I'm in the middle of one of the biggest business deals of my life. And what I need is a little pat on the back and a little encouragement. Instead of all that, this sniping and sneering you've been doing for two days. You want a pat on the back for trying to sell rabbit traps? That's nuttier than all your other schemes put together. There's gonna be a rabbit epidemic! <laughs> Don't you know a 
what's happening? Last year, hundreds of farmers had all their crops eaten up by swarms of rabbits. And the paper says the same thing's going to happen this year. You big dumb cluck. That rabbit epidemic last year was in Australia. <laughs> well, this year it's going to happen here. And don't you call me a dumb cluck. Well, what else would you call somebody who can't tell the difference between hand cream and bobby pants? You got one broken ankle. Would you like to try for two? <laughs> don't you try to find out. Did you ever see a dumb cluck go crazy? <laughs> I am going to a nursing home. You just wheel me into the bedroom so I can get the thing. I am not your slave. You can go get your things yourself. Oh, well, I knew it was going to come to this sooner or later. Your Aunt Fern took one look at you in the cradle and she said, Boy, this one is going to cost you nothing but grief. And boy, hey, I'm telling you, she was right. Watch out for the tarantula. <laughs> Don't you leave me alone here with that devil. See you in the funny papers and good night, ma'am. <laughs> I guess my wheel must have gotten caught on the cord. Oh, Mama, I'm so sorry about the things I said to you. No, no, now, now it's just as much my fault as it is yours. I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused. No, no trouble. No, not at all. Mama, it's us. After all, you're the one that's been sick, Mama. And we're going to be more understanding, ain't we, Ed? Ed. <laughs> Yes, Mother, I'm sorry I got you all riled up, dear. Is it, are you all right right here? You want me to put you someplace? Fine. No, wherever I won't be a bother. You can take my shawl now. Yes, you? Mama. Ed, you can turn that heat down a little bit now. You know, she won't get me a cup of last Yes, Mama. And you know, that's my very best shawl. I wish you'd hang it up before your boys get home. They'll sit on it with their dirty jeans and they'll ruin it. In a minute, Mama. In a minute. In a minute. That's your middle name. Well, Eunice. I only got two hands. What do you and want the me next to do? Hang up the shawl. Are you kidding me?